Chapter 4 Ashley Carter My name is Ashley Carter. I was born and raised in Carpenter's Landing, unfortunately. Life wasn't exactly easy for me growing up. My older brother was a deadbeat, and my parents both ended up leaving us at some point when I was still young, so I had to spend the better part of my life putting up with that day by day. I tried not to let those experiences bring me down a similar path, though, you know? I saw what it brought my brother, and I wanted to be better. That was why, instead of getting into drugs and alcohol like every other person who lives here, I tried to make the best of my situation. I did well in school, saved what little money I had, and I have been studying law at the Tremblay Community College for the last couple of years now. If all goes well, I'll be out of this town as soon as I graduate. All that to say, my story actually started on my college campus. I was up late one night working on a project. I was studying the Woods family homicide that happened a couple years back, and completely lost track of time. The sun was setting by the time I'd noticed how long I was there. Looking at the time, I figured I'd worked hard enough and could make my way home to spend the rest of the night relaxing. I live close to campus, only about ten minutes away at the longest, so usually I just choose to walk instead of taking the bus or driving. That night was no different. I must have been halfway to my house by the time the streetlights began turning on one by one around me. Each of them flickered to life pathetically, with some of them glowing dully and others burning out completely as I passed them by. It was as these lights began to illuminate the streets that I noticed him following me. This guy in a white hoodie who walked on the sidewalk parallel to me. I didn't see him until one of the lights above revealed him walking at an equal pace to mine. At first I didn't pay him any mind. I saw plenty of guys like him on my walks home, and some of them had even approached me before asking for things like spare change. That was why I wasn't as alarmed as I should have been when he began to make his way to my side of the sidewalk. I saw him take a sharp turn onto the middle of the street, keeping his hands in his pockets and his head low. With a closer look I now had at the guy, I could see he was also wearing a white medical mask over his face that concealed most of his features. I was a bit worried by his quick approach, but rather than running or making a scene, I simply called out to him. Hey! Can I help you, man? I shouted. The words caused him to freeze up completely like a deer in headlights. He stood there in the middle of the street for a few seconds until slowly tilting his head up to meet my gaze. His eyes were wide and bloodshot. I couldn't tell if he looked high or completely insane. The moment we made eye contact, his demeanor shifted into something completely different. Instead of quickly approaching like before, he now slowly and methodically advanced towards me with his entire body hunched over. With each step, he put all of his weight onto one of his feet, and the entire time he never broke eye contact with me. Any time I would step back or move suddenly in any way, he would freeze up momentarily and begin sizing me up like a predator stalking its prey. At this point, I was thoroughly freaked out. I didn't know what the guy wanted, and nobody was out there that night that could see what was going on. I started weighing my options. I worried that if I stayed there, he would try to mug me or something, but I also feared that if I suddenly ran away, he would give chase. You may think I'm an idiot for deciding to do so, but in the moment, I just decided to stand my ground and find out what this guy wanted from me. He continued his slow, animal-like advances until he was standing about three feet from me, still remaining in the middle of the road. With how close he was, I could catch the scent of something burnt coming off of him, like scorched hair and oil. It was foul, and almost made me gag. 
I tried stepping back from him, folding my arms and trying to keep my distance. He stared at me like a curious child, tilting his head and eyeing me up with those wide, bloodshot eyes. I went to speak to him again, but he cut me off as he spoke in a low, raspy whisper. I finally found you, he murmured. There was this shaky excitement in his tone that freaked me out even more than I already was. What are you talking about? I don't know you, man, I responded, taking another step away from him. I had never seen this guy in my entire life. To this day, I have no idea what he was talking about. But he persisted and seemed almost offended by what I'd said to him. Yes, you do. How could you not recognize me? Is it because of the mask? He continued to whisper, his voice trembling. As he spoke, he pulled one of his dirty hands from his pocket and removed the medical mask covering his face. I gagged at the sight of him. His face was pale and covered in thick, yellow blisters that went along his cheeks and mouth, which was contorted into an uncomfortable red smile. Yellow, crooked teeth lined his sore-ridden mouth, and I could see... I could see bits of blood running from his gums all the way down his lip and chin. He had long, black, greasy hair, which ran down into his shoulders and partially over his face, now obscuring his large, bloodshot eyes. He looked like someone had splashed his face with acid. When he saw my visceral reaction to his face, that bloody smile of his somehow grew wider, now stretching ear to ear. It looked so painful. I continued to walk backwards, raising my hand in front of me to keep the distance between us. I could barely speak when I choked the words stay back out of my mouth. He let out this small, childish giggle as if he enjoyed every second of our encounter. <laughs> oh, come on now. That's no way to look at your brother. What would mom and dad think? He asked me, his voice now raising as he began advancing towards me with that same hunched posture. I had no idea what he was talking about. This man was not my brother. I had never seen him before. Before I had time to question him about this, though, he pulled his other hand from his sweater pocket, revealing a used hunting knife that was covered in dried, crusty blood. He raised it towards me, tilting his head with that same childlike demeanor he'd previously shown, but before he could swing it at me, I turned and ran down the street faster than I had ever run in my entire life. I could hear him give chase behind me, gaining on me as I bolted down the road. I screamed for help, but nobody came, just as I'd feared. I was alone out there while that maniac hunted me down. The one thing that kept me going, aside from the adrenaline pumping through my veins, was the promise that I could get to my house if I just kept running. It was close by. I knew the route, and it was only a couple minutes away when walking. If I just kept going at the pace I was... I would make it before he caught up to me. I continued to run, never once looking behind me. My throat burned with a searing pain. I could feel my legs giving way, but I kept going until I arrived at my house. As I made my way up the steps of the front porch, I swung the door open, turning to look behind me only to see nothing. He was completely gone. That didn't stop me from running into my house, slamming the door behind me and locking it as quickly as I could. Not long after, I called the police and reported the entire thing. I was told that they would look for the man who had attacked me, but it didn't seem like anything had come from it. I never did see him again, but I have spent every single night after fearing that I will. I refused to stay on campus during those late hours anymore, only ever leaving on the community buses where I know large groups of people will be gathered. 
At night, I never feel safe anymore. Any small sound I may hear makes me jump out of my own skin, and I always see that hideous face staring back at me when I close my eyes to sleep at night. If the person you're looking for is the same guy who attacked me that night, I hope to God you catch him. Not just to stop these murders, but to give me some peace of mind. I don't want to spend every day of my life looking over my shoulder, thinking some boogeyman is hiding in the dark. Samuel could see that Ashley was shaking as they finished their testimony. The poor kid was scared out of their mind, even when recounting an old story. He tried to the best of his ability to give them some form of comfort, leaning forward on the table with his elbows as he spoke. Ashley... I promise you, my partner and I will find this man. You don't have to be afraid of him. I'll make sure of it, he said solemnly. Ashley seemed to calm down upon hearing those words. The shaking stopped, and they took a long, deep breath. Thank you, was all Ashley said in response as they pushed their chair out and left the room before Norman could even see them out. Ashley left the police department soon after, going out to the front desk just as the next witness stood from his chair. The man was tall and built. He had long, fluffy brown hair and very distinguished, chiseled features. As Ashley tried to pass him by, the man spoke to them. "'You saw him too, right?' he said, grabbing Ashley's attention. Ashley turned to the man, staring up at him and meeting his eyes. Despite how large the man was, when Ashley looked into his eyes, they saw the same fear they'd felt, and knew they had both encountered the same boogeyman. Yeah, I did, Ashley muttered before catching himself. But they'll catch him. I know they will. With that, Ashley turned and left the building, letting the man make his way to the interview room to give his own testimony. <laughs>